This is a Jewish Holocaust Center, oral testimonies project. Philip Meisel is interviewing Mrs. Berta Lipton on the 1st of April, 1993. Mrs. Lipton, could you tell us something about your childhood? But before we start, could you tell us where were you born and when? I was born on the 1st of September, 1970. Right. In Pilitz, Biala. Pilitz, Biala. Where, right. Were your parents religious? Yes, very. Yeah. What was the name of your father? Mm. If you... Avram Kalma. Avram Kalma. And mother? In the and All right. And as a child, did you go to a religious school? No. No. I went to the plain school, the folk school. Folk, yeah. Um, what was your father doing? We had a, a, chef, a shop. A shop selling what? Selling materials and... Uh, Yeah, and did you... Um, stockings and... I see, you know. right. Galanterian. Galanterian. Yes. And um, did you employ people in your shop? No, only my parents only worked, parents, and later right. on my sister. How religious was your family? You were, your father was wearing... Uh, a beard. Had a beard, yes. and I see. Did he go to shoe every Saturday or... Every day. Every to day show. to show. Did you? Right. And you have, you had some brothers and sisters, did you? Yes. How many? I had two brothers and one sister. And who was the oldest brother? You remember his name or? Yeah, Monique. Monique. And then who was next? Next, then I was and then a younger brother. And what the younger, what was the age difference between? It was two and a half years. Between Be Monique children. and you? Yeah. And between you and the younger brother? But also two and a half, two and half years. years. Yeah. And what was his name? Srulek. Srulek. Right. Um, as a child, you spoke home what language? I think mostly German. German. Yeah. Because your parents were under German occupation yeah. and grandparents were living in the same... Yeah, it was Austria like, was Aust the first. Sorry, not German, but Austrian occupation, mm -hmm. right? And your grandparents from mother's side and father's side were living, came from Austria or they always were living... No, my the mother country. came from Tarnow. Right. And my father came from Zhivyets. Right, I see. And how long did they live in Bielsk? Oh, they lived about 52 years. I see. Long time. Right. Um, and as a child, they sent you to the school. Yes. Yeah. Plain school. And naturally, you were, that was they taught you in Polish. Yeah, the, the yeah, language. But at they were, first, you know, yes. the school was German, and then it turned Polish. I see. Yeah. So initially it was German. Yes. Did they teach you any relating to religion? Yeah, we had a teacher who came, um, I think, once or twice a week, and he taught us religion. Right. Do you remember your childhood and what happened? What were you doing as a girl? Did you go on holidays or did you read books? Could you tell us something about yourself? Yeah, we went with my mother on holidays, and uh, I don't know. Who were your friends? Uh, mostly, my friends were mostly, you know, the ones from Bitar. From Bitar. Yes. Did you have non-Jewish friends? No. Your parents belonged to any social organization, or did they support any? My father was a Gouda. A Gouda, right. Um, and you yourself belong to Betar. When did you yeah, join Betar? Yeah, 12 years. I mean, when you were 12. Betar. And before 12, 
Um, did you take any part in any? No, no, I didn't take any part. Um, was an active Jewish life in Bielsko? Yes, it was. Would you remember what was the population of Be of Bielsko? I think thirty thousand Jews. Thirty thousand Jews, and the whole city. You would remember, but it was a large proportion of the population. Yes, it was. Yes, right. Um, did you live, there was a Jewish district where all the Jews um, lived. lived? Yes. You lived in this part, yes? Yes. Right. And as a Jew, did you feel discriminated in Poland? No. No? Not particularly. Because you, I didn't have anything to do with non-Jews, so... And your parents? My parents, maybe, I don't know, I don't remember. Um, like, you had customers, they were yes. all Jewish customers, did you have Polish no, customers? No, a lot of Polish customers. And they continued buying the goods from your store up to the beginning of the war, or did you not see any quite. change before? No, not quite. There were a lot of Germans there. Yes. And I didn't come into the shop after. The Germans came. After. But when you went to school, for how many years? I went to school for eight and about, about 12 years. 12 years. So you, this was giving you a chance to get a matric. Did you matriculate? No. No. Right. Um, approximately what year fi you finished the school? It was, um, we got, you were born 1917. You started the school at seven, that would be 1924. Yes, about, about six, I think. Six, 23. And um, if we had 12, so it was in 19. 35 approximately, is it? Yes, about it. You were, did you learn any trade as well at school? Yeah, we learned a bit of cooking and all that. I see. Yeah. This was an ordinary school, not a special school, like it was a gymnasium? No, it was a gymnasium, but it was a household, I, I understand. Yeah. Right. <coughs> For girls and boys, or only no, for only for girls. For girls, I see. Right, and um, did you read books relating to Jewish history or anything of the sort? Yeah, a bit. Yeah. Did you go to shul on Jewish on main holidays? Yes, on the main holidays. I went right. to school. Did you feel Jewish? Oh yes, we felt very Jewish. Because of the influence of the parents? Yeah, parents and then the Betar. And the Betar, right. Um, so you were a Zionist as well? Yes. Right. Did, what did your work in Betar consist of? I don't know. We had lessons and we learned about Jewish history, about Herzl, Theodor yes. Herzl, and yes. about Jabotinsky. That was the right. main. Right. In 1935, you finished the school, and what did you do then? I was home, home, mostly home. Did you help your parents yes, in business? Yes, I helped them. Did a bit of cooking and all that. I was home. You looked after the family? Yes. Too. You helped your mother? Yeah. Did mother help father in business? Oh, yes, she did. To what extent? She went every morning about eight or nine o'clock, and she stayed till afternoon. And what time did your father go to business? The same also, time. Also, yes. Right. First, he went to Davenin. Huh? Yes. That's right. You see, because in some families, women took more responsibility more, yeah. for the daily life, while the Husbands was both more involved with the religion than yeah. as a My parent. mother was too. very good in the business. She was the main. Good. I see. Um, in that, did you feel any changes taking in your life due to the political situation in Poland? Yes. What happened? Uh, we are 
I should tell you that. You should. It happened. You know, it happened like this, that my father believed in Mashiach, so I said, you see the film, the war is coming, why shouldn't Mashiach come now? Yeah. And help us. Yeah, and what happened? It was lots of things, I don't know, little things. For instance? For instance, that we knew that the war is coming. You knew that the yeah. war is coming? Yes. <laughs> and, uh, did you take any steps to leave Poland? Or? No, no, we couldn't do anything. I don't know. When did you hear? Somehow you didn't leave your family, you didn't go anywhere. Did you have any huh? uncles, aunties? Yes. Were they living in the same city? Some. Some, Some yeah. Was it a close relationship? Did you? Did you see them on a daily basis? Yes, no, no, not daily, but weekly, on a weekly basis. sometimes twice, three times a mm -hmm. week, depends. And you took a lot of interest in their lives? Yeah. And they took... When you were a child, who was bringing you up? Your mother? And the yeah, what mostly. Mostly the mother. Yeah. What was the relationship with the rest of the family, with the two brothers? Like, that because... Mm -hmm. Good? I talked a lot with my older brother. Brother, you confide, could confide in him. Yeah. Right. We talked a lot about religion, about that. I see. Yeah. Politics? Maybe also a bit. But Did he go to Betar? Yeah. With you? Yes. No, he didn't go he to didn't. Betar. Oh, no. What he was he doing? He was very religious too. He was very religious. Yes. And yes. your younger brother? My younger brother was... I don't know. I don't remember him very well. He was, he was also probably religious. Religi Daddy took him. He went to shul, but he was young. Mm -hmm. And then you said that you remember some changes in political life in Poland. Did you get newspaper? Did you read newspapers? At no. Home? no, no, no. Only my mother rang my father and mother. They read the hind and the moment. Oh, they did. Like, yes. Right. So, that they were very good newspapers. Yeah. yeah. So you knew what's happening in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear parents commenting on the political development? Yeah, of course. For instance, what did they discuss? I thought that it, that it would be coming a war, but I didn't think uh, such a war. Did they expect Hitler to win the war and... Uh, no, they never expected to win. Did, did you hear about the developments in Germany, Kristallnacht? Yeah, of course. You did? Of course. What else did you know about developments in Germany? Yeah, because a lot of people came from Germany to Poland. Right. And I told you, of course, did that you I have a big army and everything. Do you remember the incident at Zbonshin? Sponsoring, yes, yeah. there came a lot of Jews to sponsor. Could you tell us something about it? <clears throat> no, we got to know a lot of Jews who came to sponsoring. Yeah. They yeah. threw them out from Germany. Right. Polish Jews especially. Yeah. Yeah. People who had Polish citizenship. Yeah. And Paul didn't want to take them for a while. Yeah. They were in very bad co condition. condition. Yeah. Did you try to help them? Yeah, a bit. Yeah. Did you, so you knew that the Nazism is growing in uh, Germany. Um, did it have any influence on Polish in conditions in Poland? Yes, I think so. I think so. Do you remember any particular incident? No. 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 Just I forgot. You at home you spoke. Yiddish. With your friends. Not that much Yiddish like Deutsch. Deutsch German. German. Basically German. Yeah. And with your friends in uh, uh, in Betar? Yeah, we spoke also oh, German. German. And and but even so we learned a bit of Hebrew, but we spoke mostly German. German. Yeah. And um, at school you used Polish. Also German. Also German. 
You were taught in the German language? No, we were taught in Polish, in the upper class, let's say, from the fifth, sixth grade, started in Polish. Oh, right. Yeah. You said that there was a lot of Germans in Bielsko. Yes. What was the relationship between Jews, Germans, and Poles? At first, not bad. At first, it was quite good, because we had a lot of customers, and German customers, and all that, but later on, not. I didn't come. It, because you were Jewish. Yeah. Did you feel it in any other form? Like you were religious people and you were eat, eating kosher meat. Oh, yes. Do you remember any problems with uh, kosher? Yeah, I didn't allow to, to, you know, kill them. In That's Jewish. right, yeah. Pristorova, do you remember yeah. the name? Yeah. yeah. What else do you remember from this time? Not much. Yes. I had a one grandfather. Yes. He used to live also not far from from Zivitz, you know, yes. in Le Lenkavice. That right. is about twelve kilometers from yes. And he was a shoyhat. Right. He was a grand. And from my grandmother's side. Yes. I came from Tarno from my yes. mother's side. Yeah. Uh, my grandmother, yeah. she was she died very young. She had, how do you say the? Forgot. Yeah. Forgot the word in English. She, natural. Which it was a natural death. She, she was sick. It was a natural death. She was took a crank. She oh yes, I am. Yeah. It's very common thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember. <laughs> and. Yeah. She died, and her brothers were all the rabbis. So okay. Very religious. Very religious. religious. <laughs> right. Uh, did you have an ambition when you were a young girl? What do you want to be when you uh, grow up? That's right. Yeah, I wanted to go to Israel always. Right. Yeah. And what happened then? 35, 36, you're still in the shop, yes? Yes. Oh. So. But what happened with me? You know, I we had a lot of girlfriends, and we went out, and every day we met. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I went to the beta almost every day. Almost every day. Almost, yeah. Right. And we learned a bit of Hebrew, but yeah, it's hard. It's a hard language. Do you remember the day when the war broke out? Yes. The, I the date? Do you still remember the Yeah, date? the 1st of September. 1939. 39. Did anything happen till the breakout of war? Anything important in your life? Which no, you would like? not really. Nothing? Did you get engaged? No. No. I had a boyfriend, but he died in the war. He died in the war? Yes. <laughs> Again, and the parents expected a war to break out. Did you try to collect some food or to take in? nothing no, at all? No, I didn't think of that. So what happened on the day when the war broke out, when Germany started the war? I think I was in Krakow at that time. With my sister, well, she got married and she lived in Krakow. Your sister? Yeah. But you said you had two brothers. You had yeah, I had two brothers and one sister. Oh, I see. Sorry. And, and where did the sister fit? Was it old? She was older than you? Yes, she was older, five years older. Five years? No, she was, you had an older sister yeah. and then came the brother. An older brother and then me and then a younger brother. What was the name of your sister? Sab Sabina. Sabina. And you went to Krakow to visit her? To visit her and she had also a shop. We were sitting in the shop and we saw the aeroplanes above us and there was an officer, a Polish officer there too. I don't know whether he did shopping or something, but I remember him. And I asked him, I said, look, I say the war is coming and he said, what is this? There you are, the war is there. It was on the 1st of September. Yeah. Um, so you were away from your parents? Yes. And what did you do then? I was in Krakow. And you stayed? Visited you my sister. You yeah, stayed? I stayed a you few didn't months. go back. Yeah. Right. So what was the development in Krakow? What happened when 
you saw the planes, and later on? Yeah. Later on the war started. Three days later they were in Billet. Three days later they were already in Billet. The first day on the 3rd or 4th of May. Yeah. I can't remember. What happened to your parents? My parents later on, I don't know, a year or two after that, I went to Tarnov. Yeah. And but my mother went to her father, to my grandfather, and I lived there with him. You mean both parents went to Tarnov? Yeah? Yes. And um, until they went to Tarnov, did they tell you, or when you were in Krakow? And you stayed in Krakow, yes? A bit, yes. A bit. I, I was coming home and went Traveling back again. Then went. Yeah. So, when the Germans came, did they introduce any special laws against the Jews? Yeah, I think so. First of all, we had to wear the star here. Yes. And then they... First of all, the, my father and my brothers and uh, I went to, how do you say, to, to Tarnov, my mother yeah. went. And they, had to, they left everything there. Right. Yes. And so I went, during this time when it wasn't so, uh, so stern the, 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 the Germans weren't so yeah. strict. I went with my mother home and we took a few mm. things, mm. things yeah. you know, material, my brother made materials, the mm. uh, the billets. The, so we took that and we took a lot of other materials and as much as we could, it was yeah. six, seven. Yeah, because you would need this money. Yeah, we needed this money to food, live. To yeah. live. Did you have problems with food, do you remember? Yeah, there was very scarce food. Food was scarce, wasn't that many. Only if you had a lot of money to pay for it, you could you get it. You had to buy it on the black market. Yes, yeah. mostly. Yeah, but and um, when you were under the German occupation, yeah. there were, did you feel any animosity from Poles or other people? Not particular. Not much. Did you still live in Europe? Oh, yes. Old homes, yeah. Nobody. Were any Jews conscripted to work? Yes, oh, yes. My brother went to work. Could you tell us more about it? What I did took him remember? food sometimes then, because he was behind Tarnov in Dembitsa, right. I think. And uh, I took him food there, and then he, he got food because there was a start. Yes. I worked a bit and then I... Do you came. remember what kind of work they were doing? No. Do you know how did they conscripted him? Did they catch him in the street or he had to report to No, work? I think they caught him in the street. Yeah. They just took yeah. him. Anything else do you remember? Like the Germans, did they well, three Jews, did you see any acts of beating up? Or yes, yes, we saw acts of beating what, up in what Krakow, did you see? I saw that. What did you see? Like? They caught the Jews and they beat them up, I ran away. Who was it, the Germans themselves? Yeah, the Germans. Germans. Soldiers. Germans. Soldiers. Yeah. Did you see any posters on the wall saying the Jews are not allowed to do this or not yeah. to do that? What was it on the post? What was written? Yeah, first of all, it wasn't the first, it was maybe the fifth or sixth. The Jews had to give up all the furs. Right. Yeah. And then they had to give up all the, the jewelries. Right. Yeah. And lots of things. I'm getting old, I forget. And uh, whatever you remember, you, you, know, you know, we all get up. Yeah. Um, do you remember this? Do you remember there was a Jewish Gemeinde? Like a I think so, yeah, there yeah. was. And the Germans did put any request to the, to the leader of the Jewish Gemeinde? Or? Probably, yes. How many people do I have to give for work or something? Yeah, but you were not involved no, in it. What was your sister's husband Because doing? I went uh, sometimes to my sister to Krakow, sometimes to Tarnov, to my parents, and I went up and down. 
And could you move freely? Far. You went yes. by train? Yes, yeah, I moved freely. Even with because the Jewish Because even staff? when we had the Opaska yeah. the thing, Armen. I, Armen, yeah, I took it down and I put it in my pocket. And when I came there and it was the Jewish part, I put it on again. I see. Yeah, but I went without everything. Jews were living for quite a while in their own homes. Yeah, for a while. The, what problems did they have to face? Do you remember any difficulties? Only that the food was scarce and all that. Uh, if my sister had to move out and uh, move to Rakovice, that was such a part behind the city, and I had yeah. to go there to, this, to live in this part. Because was more food available? No, not country. because was more food, but the Germans told them to, to, to go out, Does it, to oh, clean up the city. I see. Yeah. The Jews had to leave Krakow yeah. and go to another place. What was it called? It was, uh, I think, Rakowice. Rakowice. Yeah. Just behind Krakow. And that was some kind of a ghetto? Uh, or? Some kind of a ghetto, yeah. Ghetto. But it was open. It you was could open. come in yeah, and go out. Could go in and out yeah. um, what were the living conditions? Do you remember? Yeah, it was scarce. It was meat wasn't there. So later on, you had to buy on the black market. So you bought only once a week the meat. And right. The other thing. And did you have enough room? How many families occupied the house? Yeah, but there was a, a house with uh, my sister, two children, and. Uh, and we were sometimes the parents came to. And uh, how this house was occupied before by Jews or Poles? Or? That I don't know. You don't yeah, know? Probably Poles. Poles. And yeah. they had to buy it or pay rent for it? No, we had to pay rent. You had to pay rent. Yeah. And then you had rations of food. Yes. Which Germans supplied. Who was, there was a Judenrat or some kind of a body? Ah, yeah, there was, was there was, because there were so many Jews in, in Krakow, there were very many Jews. Right, there yeah. was a police, a Jewish police? Not yet. Not no. yet. No. So who was supervising the whole, how many Jews were in Rakowice? Oh, maybe it's about 20,000. 20,000, 20, because there's somebody who would have to keep the order. Yeah. Probably there was, but I don't know. Right. right. And um, I suppose Jews were forced to go to work, to work for the Germans. Yes. Right. Do you remember something about it? What kind of work they were doing? Or no. Probably in the ammunition factories, but I don't know. Not very much. I didn't right. go. No. no. Women, did they, women? Did, were women conscripted to any work? No, not, at, not in the start. Not later, in the start. Later, later. Later on. When you came to the concentration camp, then yes, you had to work. Right. So actually, you yourself were just traveling between Warsaw. Yes, yeah, stayed there a bit and stayed there. Not Warsaw, between Krakow and Bielsko, right? Yeah. And um, stayed there. What decided where, with whom you would stay? What was the reason? I don't know, because everybody was busy with themselves, and I don't know. I decided then to take some Irish papers, and I right. bought them yeah, from a man. Who yeah. he, he used to work there, you yeah. know, in the... In, you can say it in Polish. In the, um, to the, not Arbeitsamt, but he worked there in the Gemeinde. I see, all right. But he could make uh, these papers for me. I see. He worked yeah, in, paid, a, paid, in, in a Polish office. And yeah, you, in a Polish And he made you false documents. That yes. was in 1940, was it? Yes, I think it was yeah. in yeah. 1940. Yes. And, um, or 41. Yeah. And what happened then? What did you do with the false papers? I. I had a girlfriend and she came from Warsaw and she also had false papers so we lived together. We had one room together and in Warsaw. So you went to Warsaw? Yeah, you after that, after the I see. parents. I took the parents and everybody away. With the parents? No, no not with no. the parents. You left your parents I and you went with this girl left my to sister. Warsaw. And I went, we went to Warsaw. 
And how long did you live in Warsaw? I think just a few months. A few months. And how did you have money for food and transport? Yes, I had money. I took a few things, you know, tablecloths and things which I sold, and I had a bit of money right. for my parents. Could you correspond with your parents? Could you write letters or it was too dangerous? No, I just uh, came by, by train or bus to visit them. From time to time? Yes. Did you do it often? No, not often, but just yes. maybe three, four times a year, wasn't Yeah, but you often. said that you stayed there only a few months. Yeah, where? In, in Warsaw, Warsaw on, yes, on that was the last. Right. Was it dangerous to travel? Oh, yeah, it was very dangerous. <laughs> if they would have caught me, they would have shot me. Did you have any incidents where you had to avoid people because you were afraid they might recognize you, or? Yes. No, no nobody recognized me. But it was very, how do you say, it was very dangerous because the, everybody, anybody can ask you for the papers, so I showed them the papers. And then I, I was afraid that I can ask or there or there. Ask questions? Yeah, ask questions. Did you know anything about Christian religion, their prayers or? No, not much. Yeah, I knew about uh, very little. And your girlfriend? Yes, yeah, she knew more. More. She knew more. Yeah. And so you're living together in a room? Yes. And you had to do the shopping and the... Uh, yeah, we did the shopping sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mostly we ate outside in a restaurant. Right. Yeah, it was 30 groschen or something. Right. And so you're, you had Polish neighbors? Oh, yes, we had Polish neighbors. Do you remember the name of the street you were living? Or the part of the Warsaw, the suburb? I think it was not far from Mashokovska State. I think it was a here. good position. Yeah, it was a very good position. position. Yes. Did Polish neighbors suspect you that you are Jewish? Or no, no. Your girlfriend worked or? No, she didn't work. And she didn't work. again, she had. She, I only remember that she was very sick and she went to the hospital and I visited her every day. I brought her something to eat and all that. She was she was from Warsaw. She was she had an uncle in Billets, that's uh, how we got to know each other. And she she, when she was in the hospital, you know, so a priest came yeah. every week and he asked her if she wants to go to So yeah. she said I don't know even what to say. Yes. So she heard what the other sick people said, so she said the same. She said, I'm not ready. So he came, when he came next week, so she also said she's not ready, and then she went out for the hospital. Right. Yeah, it's very yeah. hard. Yeah. You don't know even when he starts what you have to answer something. Right. Probably religious too, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was a was the problem a language that you had to speak Polish comparatively good and at home you... Yes, I spoke uh, Polish quite well, but not perfect. Right, but good enough yes. that people could distinguish something in your accent or...? Yes, some. You know that when I was in the concentration camp, but we were more, mostly Birkenau, women were mostly in Birkenau. So we had to work in tents that nobody should run away. So there were 10 and 10 and 10. And all the nine were responsible for the tents if somebody ran yeah. away. So there was one girl, she, she came from Krakow and she was probably, uh, she had university on there because she could speak very well Polish. She told me once, Pani nie miała polskie wychowanie. She recognized. I see. So I said, mm, maybe not. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Right. Yeah. Do you remember the name, the assumed name under which you were living? Yeah, yes. What was Bronisława Lenska. Right. And there was so actually you were living in Warsaw for a few months and what happens eventually? Why did you leave Warsaw? I 
I might in Warsaw, I might papers for my sister, also Irish papers for my sister and for her children. And then I, and then I went to Krakow, I was already in the ghetto. Yeah. And I went to the get, to ghetto there, there was a man, you paid him money and he let you in. Yeah. And at the door, you know, it was a Jewish policeman or something. And he let me in and I talked to her and her husband said, no, you don't go out, not with the children. It would have been very hard even because they, they were everywhere, you know, the police and all to catch the Jew. So the husband said, no, what will happen with me and you will happen with the children. And I didn't let them out. She had two children. But he didn't want them no, to, to go. go. Um, so then when I went back yeah. to Warsaw, they caught us in Piotrkov and took the whole train to Auschwitz, you know. And then I had to take, when I went out from the train, I had to take the papers and throw them away in the run. Because I didn't want anybody to see the papers and photos and everything. Right. Yeah. So actually, you were arrested as a Pope. Yes. And, and I was in Auschwitz, I also was on the block I, seven, and the Jews were the eighth block, and I was in the seven. Before they took you... I was you, with Poles all the time. Before you, they took you to Auschwitz, do you remember any incidents or anything relating to the life in Warsaw or in Krakow? I don't know, I only know that life was very hard to get food and everything, but I had enough money. If I didn't have enough money, I sold something. I had a, a things, you know, which I take. Where were you selling your things? Oh, I, I forgot now. Mm -hmm. I was selling my things. On the to market. neighbors or there was a market? No, 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 there was a market. There was a, you had to go yeah. to market yeah. and sell. sell. Mm -hmm. yeah. So actually, it wasn't an easy life, it was very risky. Oh yeah, it was very risky, especially for me, it was very risky. Why do you say especially for you? I don't know, because for me it was especially risky, because later on I ran away from the, it was the concentration camp. You ran yeah. away, yeah. I see. But I mean before, when you were still in Warsaw, you had poles around you, yeah. nobody ever suspected that you were no. not. Nobody no. suspected, no. Mm -hmm. yeah, because sometimes when I went out among the Germans, I spoke German. Yes. So they didn't know whether I'm a Volksdeutsche or Pole or something. It was all right. Uh, what do you mean? That was where? In Warsaw? In, in Warsaw. Warsaw. In Warsaw. Yeah. Yeah. You met Germans on which basis? In the street? Or? Yeah, in the street sometimes, in uh, buses or something. Mm -hmm. Mostly we had trams. You know. mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, let's say, um, my si it was in Krakow, my sister had a shop there. She was married and she had a shop. Yeah, what was she selling? Oh, she was selling um, soap and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. She had uh, puts Perfume. and uh, Perfumes. Maybe perfumes too. Mm -hmm. But she was selling mostly the cleaning uh, things. I see, materials. And, uh, I was sitting with her, I helped her sometimes when I was there, sitting with her in the shop, and we heard two Germans coming. And one said, her name was Obstfeld, that is a German name. So one said to the other, you know, there is a German laden, let's go into this shop. Mm -hmm. the shop. Mm -hmm. And I came in. And when they came in, I said, we are not Germans, we are Jews. And you told them that you are Jews? Yeah, of course. But we were Jews at that time. But you didn't wear armor? You were? I did, I did. But you didn't wear an armor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the attitude of the Germans when they found out no, that you were? No, they said, it doesn't matter, I want to buy and I bought something. They were from the Wehrmacht, they were not specially. Mm -hmm. They were soldiers. Big pardon? Soldiers. Soldiers, yeah. yeah. And did you meet civilian Germans? No. I don't think so. Do you remember any incident of Poles disliking you because you are Jews? No, I didn't meet many Poles, really. Because it simply didn't come to the shop? 
I didn't come to the show. No, maybe that time, so my sister sold them something and they bought and went out. I don't know. Right. And then you were traveling in the train back home? Yeah, I was traveling back to Warsaw. Warsaw and in Piotrkov, this is about three hours before Warsaw, they arrested everybody, took out everybody. Only the ones who worked at Germans and had a paper, housewives, I could show you. See, this is, I'm, this is my name and I'm working here and here. And only the ones who worked with the Germans they let out. And otherwise, the whole train came to Auschwitz. How many people do you remember? They diverted the train? 150. They, 150. they took out people from the train and put yes. in another train. All. Yeah, what happened then? And then we came to Auschwitz. There were men this and women a, of They arrested ideas. me on the 15th of January, mm -hmm. 43. And on the 22nd, I came to Auschwitz. You remember exactly the day? Yes, yeah. I remember this date, because yeah. I probably often spoke about it. Right. They actually, they took on young people or all ages? I think all ages I took. To and did they give you any reason why do they suddenly arrest you? Yes, I didn't know exactly the reason, only they said themselves that could be that there were some who wanted to put mines in the, uh, under the train of the... Sabotage. They were, yes, they wanted that. They took everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. All ages? All ages, yeah. Do you remember the youngest person or child? No. And the old age? Woman, 70, 80? There was a, a girl there with us, mm -hmm. and she was from Piotrkov, so she was there to go home. Mm -hmm. and. I gave her all my jewelry which I had because I didn't want it. And she gave me her dress and I said after the war I come to pick it up but I never can. She gave you her dress when <laughs> she was a little a young girl? A young her? girl, yeah. Very young. Younger than you? Yes. I see. She was about 15 or 18 And 16. you gave because she was released to go home? Yeah, and because she was living there in Piotrkov. Because so they let her go. I, I knew that she's home there, and she got, we were a week together. And you stayed a week to be in prison. We in pr oh, in the prison. But they arrested you. They arrested put you, you in prison yeah. first. First, and, and from eight days later, we got mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. So actually, they arrested everybody who was on the train. Everybody under suspicion that they yeah, maybe that had helped bombs, with the sabotage. There was something. Yes. And... Uh, Big a bar? Big a market. Black market. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I see. Some people were black market. That's all right. Yeah. yeah. And um, this sent you as the rest of the people from the prison... So we came to Bir... To Bir Birkenau. Yes. All right. Do you remember what happened? Was it day or night? Uh, what did you see on your arrival? No, it was daytime. It was like like in the morning, because we went by train so long. And some some were saying in the train maybe that we go to Auschwitz or maybe not. But we were. I don't know. We were on the the travel about a, a day, three, two, three days, nice. and then we came to Auschwitz. Were the cattle train or passenger? Yes, cattle cattle train. train. And then we had the Auschwitz, we went all out, and we had to go to the sauna first, and then they cut the hair, right. and then they gave you the number. Yeah. Yes. I'm guessing. A pretty early number there, 30,570. Yes, could you please hold it and I will... Yeah.
the this is the first time that you came close to German authorities like SS and the yes. and so yes. on. But you said you threw out your papers. Yes, I threw out the papers which I had made for my sister. For you said, for but your own papers you retained? My own I retained. And they put you But well, I took away everything. When you went you yeah. came in and you went to the sauna to have a bath. So you had to take off all your clothes and the bag that I took, so they were the papers. All right. You didn't have any luggage with you when they took you? When they Not much. No, maybe a bag or something. They took it all away. <coughs> Everything. And they gave you the number? They gave you the and number, from then on, and they gave you clothes. What kind of a cloth they gave you? So they gave you a, a shirt and the, the pashak, the dress the, with yeah. the straps. Straps uniform. That's all. Right. Um, on in the train, did you get any food during the travel? No. From Piotr? No. No food at you all. Had to have your own food. Because I remember I was very hungry when I came there. But how people can have their food if they are released from prison? I don't know. Maybe they took the bags or something in it with something oh, I see. to eat. I While know. they were traveling, they while they were traveling before, yeah. I see. Yeah. And you didn't have any. No, I didn't. So have much. So when I came to the yes. Birkenau, I was very hungry, I remember that. And Thursday, supposed to? Yeah, probably. So when did you get the first food? When when I went to our, when you go to where they send you, they give you the number, yeah. and then they tell you go there. So you go there after the yes. others. And they give you a block to leave? To yeah, study. they give you the block. Yeah. yeah. And on the block, you got the first food. Yeah. Right. How many, do you remember the uh, the block in which you were living? What was inside yeah, banks? Pete, the banks were three: one down, one in the middle, and one up. So I took the upper one right. because I didn't like to be down. So I took the upper one, and there we were there. I don't know, about eight, nine people there. You had blankets. Yeah, I got one blanket or so. Mattresses or. Straw. straw. Just straw. Yes. Um, who was in charge? Block the Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a block artist. The, the rest next to you there were poles. Yes. The similar age? Bigger pan. The same age as you or Yeah, mostly young. Mostly young. Mostly young. Right. And can you just tell us what happened? There so we went there and we went to the to get a call you know, I don't know how you say to our bank. We yeah. went there and we slept and the next day I might uh, appeal, I count you how many people there are. And the uh, student elder states are responsible for these people. Yes. There has to has to be that many. And then they took us to work. So I went, I don't know, a week to work, and I got very sick with very high temperature. And I got the typhus. Typhoid. And uh, what work were you doing before you became sick? Do you remember before, that? Yes. Um, I think you, you worked in the field somewhere. I see. Yes. What month of the year was it? Autumn or? No, it was in, in the spring. Spring. Yeah. Spring. Spring. Yeah. So they were was sewing, it, or I came there. It was about the twenty-second of January, so that was mm -hmm. February probably. We were very sick, and I got went to the Riviera. Yeah. yeah. The mm -hmm. what, what was the treatment? Did they give? Well, you never got any medicine. Nothing. They just let you lie down. That's all. And if you got better, it was it's your luck. And if you died, it was your bad luck. <laughs> Do you remember how long did you stay? Oh, I stayed there a few weeks. A few weeks. I remember that. Did they give you any food while being sick? Oh, yeah. You got the soup, what you got for, as a halfling every, yes. every day. And you got a bit of, how do you say, the bread. Bread. So the bread I always changed for water, 
because you wanted only water. That's how the people died. Mm -hmm. And later on, I didn't eat. When I got a little bit better, I thought, look, you have to eat. I told to myself, otherwise you won't yeah. live. Right. So I forced myself to eat the, the soup, you know, the, the soggy part, the very the watery. The watery part, and I ate that and that. Every day a little bit more, and I got better. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you go out, it, your knees are, you want to just yeah, fall. Very weak. Very weak, of course. Do you remember? And then I went to work, you know. Yeah. I remember we had one, uh, a bed, um, over Shafir, a bed who watched us. Yeah. So when he moved, move, work, work, he was very stern. So he, when he went away yeah. to the others there, because there were lots of people, and I stopped, I stood, I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. and when he came right. and he looked, he had I had work. to move. Mm -hmm. That's you, how I got better and better. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Do you remember what was the food you were getting in the camp and when were you getting Yes, you were get, getting such a soup. When? In the morning, did you? No, no. In the uh, morning, you got just a coffee. Mm -hmm. Was it enough? Just a Korea coffee. No? Is that enough? Never. Is never. Enough. So you, never <laughs> you were always hungry. <laughs> you were always hungry when I got okay. better. Yeah. And we went to the field every day. We talked only about food. Right. right. And you then. What did you get in the afternoon? Did you get anything? At lunch time, 12 o'clock, we got yes. the soup. Yes. And in the evening, 6 o'clock, we got the bread. And no more coffee in the evening, too, or only bread? I think coffee, too. Coffee. Right. Yeah, I forgot. Yes, I think so. And you were still working in the field? Yes, we were working in the field. And especially there, this place, when I came, they. You know, they were building up the uh, Birkenau and they, uh, there were lots of houses which they destroyed, so we had to Demolish hack it. and hack and take out the pieces and uh, with the, uh, you know, and throw mortar them away. Or yeah. Not only mortar, no, but seagull. Seagull bricks. The bricks, yeah, and we said, they threw them away. That's it. And uh, what, actually, they were clearing. Yeah, the land cleaning to yeah, build yeah. the camp of Birkenau. Probably Birken to build another. Yeah. And who was supervising you? Assessment or? Uh, yeah, assessment and a couple. And a couple. Yeah. Men or women? I think men. Men. Yeah. Did anybody try to escape? Oh, women sometimes. Or women? Yeah. Ah yes, oh yes, a few people tried to escape. Right. So they killed them and brought them there in front of the house, you know, to, when you g went out and in, you saw them lying there. They shot them? They, of course, they shot yeah. them, they killed them. What and then they showed them to the people to make you frightened, because I once said to a girl that I want to run away from here, so she said, don't even say that because I'll kill you. Did you so I didn't. Like you get, get frightened when you are a year there, two years there. You don't even think of going away because you get used and you can't. You, you how do you say your you start in your out. energy goes and you can't you, even think yeah. of going away. You get apathetic. Yes, you get apathetic. And did you form any friendship? Do you have any friends? Yes, I had. I had oh, uh, could you tell us about and, it? Um, she was a Polish girl. Yeah. Oh, I don't know whether the, the story will bore you. No, no, it's all important. Because I, I didn't, after the war, I would have written to her, I would have sent her parcels from here. Now I regret, maybe I should have. But, you know, she, she, was, a, she was a Polish girl and yeah. she got, oh, I forgot from which town she comes. But I used to write her letters, I should know, yeah. but I forgot. Maybe when I see a, I would see a Polish map, I would but recognize the yes. place where she came from. So she was very good to me. Was she the same age or younger or older? Well, she was a bit older. A bit older. A bit older. And she but she was a real uh, the Bowen girl from the peasant. country, a real yeah. peasant. 
And she could work a lot, you know. Yeah. And she helped me sometimes. She never, she never was told that she, you are Jewish. She never suspected. No, no, I never told her. Yeah. Only the last day, but tomorrow she had to go away somewhere. So she said, you know, I heard something about you. If it would be true, it would be very nice, she said. But I didn't tell her, and she, she didn't tell her. So there were some people who suspected that you might yes. be Jewish? Yes, yes. Her, she suspected, but well, not at first. People say that Paul has this ability to distinguish straight away who is Jewish and who is not Jewish. Yes, uh, maybe the head, but I didn't look Jewish at all. I had all blonde hair, oh, I see. even dark blonde, blue eyes. I, I, look, I didn't look Jewish at all. at all, not mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, that was, that was my luck. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember an incident worse while reporting about Birkenau? Yes. Oh, yes. Please, please tell us how much as you can, whatever yes, you remember. Yes, I remember lots of things. Please you please. know, when I was in Birkenau, I, how do you say, yes. how do you say, I, I took, sometimes, you know, on the way back, we were, we walked in five people. Yes. So I took, let's say, 10 or 20 away, and I took us to, Barbitz, that is, uh, would be about 22 kilometers from, from uh, Auschwitz, yeah. uh, not far. And there was a factory, the Buna. Yeah. Do you yeah. hear about it? Rubber, artificial yeah, rubber. Yeah, rubber, that's it, exactly. And we had to, to put in, you know, the, the rubber, it wasn't a tree, it was just a little, uh, like a flower. Right. You put it into the earth and then we had to, Water it? Yeah, and, and clean it all the time. Take the weed. Weed. Weed, yeah. And weed. Weeding. Yeah. It. Mm -hmm. That's it. That mm -hmm. was the main, most important part. Right. Mostly we weeded it. Mm -hmm. And there were lots of men there in Bona. They were taking you by truck? Yeah, they were taking you by truck. And when I came to Barbies, yeah. there I had the rash on my stomach there. Yeah. How did you call it, you know? A rash. Yeah. It's a sound I don't know. Mm -hmm. I had a rash. Exam. It wasn't exam. I'll remember later. Okay. And when I came there, so the Oberschafira said, and there was a Oberschafira and a sister with him. Mm -hmm. She wore white coat. And I think she was Jewish too. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, yes, let's send them back because the others can get it and all that. So yeah. the Since sister you, said, look, we will keep her, I give her this cream and she can put it down every day. Mm -hmm. And if she's better in two days, we keep her. And if not, we send her back. Mm -hmm. I was better, of course, in two weeks. She gave me the cream and I stayed on there. And we stayed there for about a year, year and a half. That was Barbies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was quite good. We worked hard. You worked very hard. But you got a um, zulag, yes, you know, Addition something food. more to eat. Yes. And we got a, a sausage sometimes and that and that, yes. So actually, you were still living in Birkenau? Yes. And working in Birkenau? Outside, in outlag. And where did you get the additional food? Uh, there, in the outlaw, we got outlager. everything. We got the, uh, the soup and the, mm -hmm. uh, the bread in the evening and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So actually, it was reasonable. Yeah, that, you were that starving, was reasonable. But you, you, were, you were not starving, but you worked very hard. Yeah. What months of the, that was practical? Yeah, I was yeah. telling you about Kaja, about the girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, this girlfriend was very good to me, I must say. Yes. Because sometimes I went to sleep in the Sunday afternoon and she sewed me an apron mm. on the, for me. Yeah, she was very nice. And, but I tell you why I never wrote her. I could have written to her after the war. Because she got a lot of things from home. Excuse me, she 
Chirzba, yeah. That, that was, was called. Name? That was uh, the the thing. Oh, the, I see. Yeah, the that was called. Yes. Chirzba, right? Yeah. And she got a lot of parcels from home. And I also had parcels because I'll tell you later on why. I had food because I wrote letters for the people. Oh, I see. Yeah. You, Every month. They couldn't write a letter at home. So no, you were not in German. I couldn't write German. And you, and you I, could write. Oh, yes. But you, it had to be in. I mean, the had prisoners could write, but it had to Once be. Once a month, the Poles could write. A letter home. So on the 15th, I already started writing mm -hmm. some letters. And with Kaja, I, I'll tell you with Kaja. Right. She, yeah, she got from, I don't know whether she got from home or she brought it. But she showed me once, and that was gold uh, coins 20. So I knew what it 20 is. 20 go gold pieces. Dollars or? Yeah, 20 dollars, yeah. Mm -hmm. But there were gold so pieces, like I've never valuable. seen that in my yeah. life. And I've never since then I've, I've right. seen it, I don't know why. Because here they haven't got gold pieces, but in America they had, that's where gold. So I told her this is 20, but I don't know what it, what it is, what's worth it. So she had two of those, and she had a lot of rings, and a lot of things, jewelry there. Mm -hmm. and we went every day to work and you had to type with you. Let's say you had a box with that, a bit of soap and your spoon, what you ate and all these things. And she had these things with her. It, it was it, such a, a jar and there was fat in the jar. Mm. It was schmaltz. She mm, got chicken. home yeah. fat, yeah. And she put the things in Inside. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was in a, in a Zaza bottle from a material, and she put that in. Mm -hmm. And after a while, they were saying, oh, gosh, I've got so much the jewelry in this. And she was Old. frightened. Yes. The girls were only saying, Sorry. she was frightened. And I carried for her maybe half a year. I if they would have caught me with that, mm -hmm. I wouldn't ask questions. They would have shot me on the spot. Mm -hmm. And I carried this for her maybe half a year. And when we said goodbye, she gave me that to keep that bag. And she went to the sauna, and I gave her new clothes. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, it was also a story like that. One went to work, and one stayed to cook, to do the cooking in the lag. It was later on when we, when we got the, went away. I went to Austria, and she went somewhere else. That's so when it, she was dressed in a new pashak and new things, and she was going down there. I could have kept the whole jewelry for myself, but I did not run after her. Someone gave me a speck and I gave her that. She didn't want to take it? She did. She oh, did. it was her. She wanted to take it. Yes. So um, she took that. Whether she saved it or not, I don't know. And, but I was angry because she should have said, open it and take out one ring for you. Because right. I expected that, yes. that she would give me something she give for anything. the carrying. And she didn't give me anything. Mm. <laughs> right. Um, so actually... So I was very angry at her at yes. that time. I got all the jewelry and I ran away. You said that she was taken away. Yeah, she was. She was taken away. Uh, let's say that I four or five hundred people to a right. ammunition factory. So right. she was taken away to somewhere to transport. for work, yes. And we, I was taken away too a bit later. Later on, I yeah. see. Um, but later on, you know, came the whole from a uh, uh, lodge, a lodge of people came. Po from Poland? From Poland. Polish people, yeah, yeah, Polish from lodge. People um, and I saw this and I burned. Polish, they were, they were Polish, Polish. Poles. No, Polish Jewish. Ah, you saw the... Yeah, Actually, I saw them coming. This is important. We were not, uh, not allowed to go out. You had to be in the, uh, in the house, you know, in the Koye. In the Sperre. It was a Sperre, but I went out. Right. And, I at and I saw them coming, and I saw them walking there and there. And then I said, yes, I go away from here. And then we went, uh, I went away to... In Hürtenberg to Austria. And that was my last um, place. 
you were in Birkenau, you were crematorium in Birkenau. Oh, yes. Did you see, do you know something about it? Yeah, I know about it, that it was every day you greased, uh, burnt uh, bones and meat and everything. You could smell it? Yeah, of course. Did you see any other nationality apart from Poles? Yes, there Wales. were a lot of, even when we went to Hirtenbeck, there were a few Italians, let's say about 20. About and women? All yeah, women, yeah. all women. Yeah. And then were 20. The, and then were Russians a lot, Those were Russians. few Russians. Did you ever talk to them? Oh yes, we talked, but we didn't talk about politics or something. Did Just you ever ask them why they were sent and how did they come to Auschwitz? No, no, we didn't ask them. They didn't ask me and I didn't ask them. They worked on a similar work as you? Yeah, they did exactly the same. The same, work. Yeah. I see. So they still could survive. Yeah, I could. There oh, was yeah. any beating? Did you see any beating? Oh, yeah. Sometimes. What what kind of incidents did you see? <laughs> I'll tell you. Right. You know, when we, when we were in Hirtenberg... No, I still ask about Birkenau. About Birkenau? Yes, I did, I did. I had, you know, the, how do you say, the... Lager Elteste, or the, yes. she had a Lager few Elteste. people who worked for her. Stuben Elteste. For Stuben, yeah, Elteste. Yes. Even the Stuben Elteste had a few people who worked for her. But I, now, one day, let's say, when you went out in the night and you did a uh, yeah. little pipi down there, so, so she came with such a stick and she smacked Why? you. Why? Because she Because you're not allowed, you have to go to the toilet. And there, there were lots of things, but people did or said, so that got, uh, she got had with to a keep stick. order. Yes, and that she got so, for disobedience, yeah. did she beat you just because she wanted to get rid of her emotions? No, 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 not there, no, not there. Was it a Polish woman who was a blocker this day, or? No, with us we had Renia, she was a, a, from, a, she was from Tarnow, she was a Shiksa. Polish, Polish girl. A Polish, yeah. yeah. And uh, she could speak quite good German, but I could speak better German, 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 but I never said I could speak German. Do you know? But now when we went to Hirtenberg, that was the last. The war had to finish, or I die, or yeah. the war now, finishes. Now, before we come to it, I want to get so many details about your life in Birkenau. So, um, you were given food, you had your own dish. Yes. Did you yes, have spoons? Yeah, we had spoons, spoons? yeah. Right. The bread already was cut up in pieces. Yeah, in every f four pieces. Yeah, a loaf was cut up. A loaf, yeah, but uh, there was uh, small loaves. Look like this. They were. Have a look. They were like this. The loaves. Yeah. They were cut up like this, and f the, you get a yeah, four, a quarter of it. Yeah. Actually, it's supposed to be a two kilo of the bread. The first day when I got this bread, I put it on my bed and I went to wash my hands, and when I came back, it was gone. So I didn't eat anything. You realize the condition? Oh, yeah. I realized. Um, what shoes did you wear? Oh, they gave you, they, they gave you shoes, you know. Um, Leather shoes uh, or wooden no, clocks? No, wooden, wooden, wooden clocks. clocks. But later on you just got the leather shoes from somewhere, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you could uh, organize or something. But you don't seem to be a person who could organize. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I did, I did. Shoes, you did? I did, yes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And the relationship with other prisoners? That like, was all right. All right. Yeah. Only this girlfriend I had, this Polish mm -hmm. girlfriend. She was very nice to me. She made the lunches and we yeah. ate lunch. What do you mean bread. lunch? That on Sunday or during the week? During the week when we went to work. She so made the you lunches. You had a break. At work, when at work, yeah, we had one hour, full hour, from break. twelve till one. Till one, and how could you prepare lunches? Could you tell more about she it? She prepared it because she yeah. had, she had a schmaltz and she had oh, that. You, so she did. The shared, she shared her she food. She shared the food. We shared, shown. we shared the food together. So yes. That helped quite because a lot. Because I got yes, yes, it did help. The, I gave a, uh, once a month. I told you, the You're poles right, were allowed to ride home. Yeah. And there was a girl there, a woman, 
would she, so she, she, she didn't recognize me that I'm Jewish. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, no. Yeah, all right. She didn't recognize, you yeah. know, my eyes. She said, you couldn't type that off. Stop. I was only frightened that uh, I was speaking different language. <laughs> Please. Yes, and when I wrote these letters, you know, yeah. the people gave me usual the sausage, which, uh, which we got lots and pieces like that. Or they gave me the margarine, or they gave me a piece of bread. And all that I gave to Kaja, and we ate together. Oh, I, see. Yeah. I understand. We had the food. We're together, you we shared together. the yeah, food the together. Food. So she made lunches. Yeah. One bread she made with margarine, and one she made with sausage. So we had it. So actually, yeah. having this additional supply from home, Nobody was starving. There was uh, no, no. The poles were not starving. Not starving. No, some was beautiful. And they sent the cakes and things, sweet things and everything. So they were not I starving. See. Only the Jews were starving. Did you see the Jews? Oh yeah, we saw the Jews going to work and coming from work and all that. What do you? What can you tell us about it? What can I say? Nothing. They looked, they were, they looked worse, and I, some. Some were running around, and I caught them, and it so, wasn't easy to s look at you. Did the Poles ever try to give them some food, or...? No. To help no, them? Nobody no. gave anybody. You were not allowed, or...? Yeah, you were not allowed, and you didn't give it. Yet. They ate it themselves. They didn't give it. Mm -hmm. so. Did they ever talk about Jews? Yeah, yeah. What would they say? Uh, just friendly not or unfriendly? Friendly, not that much. They don't talk because they had the same, you know, how do you say, the same loss. The same faith. The faith you mean, and the but Jews, uh, actually, you, know. you can't compare the faith. They were eating well. And, yeah, uh, but uh, and and say not everybody got parcels. And mm -hmm. It wasn't so easy for them either. So. <laughs> Did you get any news from outside in the letter? How the war is progressing? No, they were not allowed. Then they uh, censored. Censored, yeah. But the letter who went out was censored, and the letter who came in was censored. You know, and there was a, la a girl there, what she, a Polish girl, what she was serving the Jews. She was a, mm -hmm. a, a dienstmaid, a maid, and she was serving, so she learned Yiddish. She learned very well Yiddish because she was writing yeah. German letters. <laughs> yeah. Right. Before I came, that I came and I wrote the letter. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> um, so gen generally, the Polish girls were very friendly. Oh yes. Even if they uh, suspected they some friendly, of the Jews. And in the camp, this is a, a very important question. So, if you can remember, did they say anything about? Warsaw get uprising. Yes, I knew when the uprising is because I knew when the people were coming. They were coming to us. And to what did they say about it? About it? Uh, nothing. It's good that I uh, might an uprising and all that. I was pleased with it. But you don't care so much about outside when you are inside. It's different. But when you see another person, even if he is a Jew and yeah. he is very hungry, starving, don't you? have an impulse to do something for you? Yes, but uh, I did a lot. I didn't, of yeah, I don't mean you personally, I mean some of the Polish girls, oh. didn't they feel like? No, not, not really. But you know, when the last, how do you say, the last part, I was in Hirtenberg, that's Austria. Yeah. That is 30 kilometers uh, n not far from Vienna. Right. Yes, you know. So there was a, also a munition factory in the mountain. Right. It was in the mountain. But there I said, I'm coming and I will say that I can speak German. Yeah. That was the last mm -hmm. time. So we came there to Austria, we came but on, in September or October 44. There we came. Yes. Still would like to ask you some more questions. Yes, uh, I'm yes. sorry that I'm so persistent because um, you see, this is important. You see, we have people who were in Birkenau 
Jewish people as Jews. Yeah. But you were in completely different conditions. Yeah. Yes, I was. Right. I was. So, That's why I lived through. Otherwise, I would have gone sick and finished. Right. So you had Sunday off. Yes, Sunday off. We slept and we ate and we talked. But you we were sang still, songs. You still had an appeal in the morning. Yes, always yeah. six o'clock in the morning. Were you allowed? To get any books? No, no I never books. got books. There were only no, no books. The only contact with the outer world were the letters from. Well, the, the letters and what people heard. Somebody came in to set things. There yeah. was a, yeah, there was a uprising and all that. I knew, and we knew about it. You don't ever remember that some of the Polish girls had contact with the people from other nationalities, like Frenchmen, or they had some contact with the underground in Auschwitz. No. No. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time there were girls in charge of you, but there were men too. Lagerführer was a German, a German yeah, man or he, a woman? but he was. There was a Lagerführer in too, a, a, a woman. He never came into us. Black Refurer in. Yes. Do you remember her? Yes. Uh, you, you don't remember the name, but what did she look like? She was tall, dark, very good looking. Very yeah. good looking. Um, was she cruel? Uh, yes, sometimes she was sometimes. cruel. Sometimes. That is in Birkenau, yes? In yes, in Birkenau. Yes, yeah, she was cruel sometimes. She was beating herself? The girls, the yes. The girls. Yes. And there were couples as well. Oh yes, there were couples as well. Did you meet any good couples? Yeah, our couples were mostly men uh, from the SS. This, yeah. If they were SS, they were not couples because the SS wore uniforms. Yeah, but they were there. They were there the uh, watching were... the work. They I were, see. Yeah. So, oh, I see. You mean you supervisors? Supervisor. But there were also couples wearing the bands oh, yeah, on the arms. Oh yeah, there were a few couples. Yeah. I don't even remember them. You don't remember no. them. I remember um, only the, the Oberschafir. That's a very high rank, actually, Oberschafir. Yeah, they yeah. were watching and us. They were watching us, yeah. and they were just making sure that you do your work. Yes. Or, yeah. yes. Did they call you names? No. Only the number, or they call you you. No. Or I something. don't mean names, I mean names that are in the derogative, like poet. Pornische Schweine or something like that? No, 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 not especially. He only said, you turn around, you in the... So you had to turn around and he mm -hmm. told you, work a bit harder, work a bit better, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, that way. Any beating? A bit, yeah. A bit, if somebody didn't work properly? You work properly, yeah. Any other penalties? Somebody didn't work? No. No. Not, not when I didn't work, I didn't get penalties. But you know, I started telling you about that. She got a penalty. That was in... Uh, in Hirtenberg. No, no, I'm still yeah, there. in Birkenau. Yeah, yeah but the, the, I forget what okay, I wanted to tell you. I will remind you. you. I will no, remind. No, but, uh, oh, please tell us. Remind Good. me that... No, you can tell us now. And yeah. she, when I was in Hirtenberg, I told you I came there, and I said that I understand German. Mm -hmm. So when he and then so the Oberschafir asked me, "Do you want to be a dolmetscher?" I say yes. Mm -hmm. And then we went to work, and he told me to watch these people. So I saw what he wanted me to be a couple. He Super. didn't want me to be a dolmetscher, and I didn't say anything. And we started working, and the girls, one girl said, "But you know, I'm very tired." So I said, sit down. The second one saw that this is sitting. <laughs> so she said, she started to. So we all sit down. <laughs> Me too. What happened when the And he came, the Oba Shafira came. He said, what's that? I said, I don't know. The girls were tired and I told them to sit down. So he threw me out. <laughs> yeah. He threw me out and even the girls had to work. And so, did he nominate somebody else to? Yeah, I think it did, position. it did, yeah, for my position, yes, yeah, somebody else. Didn't you realize that they were there to work? That yeah, you... no, I realized, but I didn't care, I was, uh, I didn't. So, that's what I want to tell you about this girl. Yes. Yeah, and there was, we worked in tents, you know, 
And then there was that one ten who was the, her father was a Polish officer, right. and the other one was the Pella Lewinska, what I told you, what she told me, that Paninia Mapolski, All right. yeah. this one. And there were a lot of other girls. You know, there were one girl there, I remember, and she wrote home a letter, you know, that was like a book. Right. But I didn't want to tell her that I understand that. In Polish, I was reading in Polish and translating. But if so you I had to tell her that you should understand the language, no? I did understand the language, but, but I didn't want to translate it for her. So I said, look, I, I don't understand everything what you were writing. You must write a simple Polish. Because I didn't want to show her that I it's speak so well German. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want I, I just kept it uh, hidden. So she said, all right, so, I'll, so she wrote another letter. And that I translated. I see. And she wrote it home. And then there was one girl, I don't know whether she got sick or something, who went away from this tent, and they all came to me, and I wanted me to be with them, to work with them, the tents. You know, to, to be, be the tense tense group, girl. yes. In this group, yeah, but that was the elite group. What do you call elite? For the lager, yeah, because their fathers were uh, officers and, you know, they were so the, very educated. People. So you had the class distinction? Yes, I did. I did. And I so worked actually, with them. Were there other girls who could have been Jewish? Yeah, there were girls who were Jewish. She was a, she had a Lager Schreiber, she was a Schreiber, she wrote everything down. And she was for sure Jewish. Lager. But we talked together. Yeah. She wanted to give me French lessons, and she gave me a few lessons, but I couldn't. I, I just, I wasn't ready for studying. Naturally, no. No, I couldn't study. And uh, who nominated the people? What should they be? Lager Schreiber? Oh, yeah, that's uh, when you came there, when you, you had came, to When do you it, arrived. Yes. And then when I was there, the Oberschaffer knew that I speak German, so he might me. I was belonging to the kitchen, but I was in the magazine. So there was a, a, a storeroom. A storeroom, yeah. There was written, let's say, every, it got uh, four ounces or four deca of mm. margarine and the sausage and bread, and I had to write it down what we got and what everybody got. Right. And yes. then, and Yes. Even when I speak, I forget. That's all so, right. So, um, so that was better. And I was belonging to the couple from the kitchen. She, but she left always food for me. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's what I want to tell you because you asked about it. And I had my soup, yes. which I took in the evening to the where I slept to the cab, mm -hmm. and I gave it to Jewish girls. I said, Come and, and you can pick up your soup. And did you feel, and I gave was it any risk involved? No, there was no risk involved because I ate there in the kitchen what Katya gave me. Right. Yeah, she, she, she gave me what was left from the Germans, a bit of kartoffel, a bit that, a bit that. Oh, that was the so kitchen that was for the boss, kitchen. For, the, for both, yeah. For the so I SS ate and for the, the Heftling, yeah. yes. So I ate because we were in uh, Hirtenberg, we were only 400 people. I see. I so, yeah, and I took my soup, or sometimes my bread, and I gave it to her. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, um, uh, the Jewish girls who came there, could they just cross? There was a division between Polish and the Jewish section, wasn't it? Yeah, but uh, you don't never cross. You never went to the Jews. Or so how could Mary. the Jewish girl pick up the soup? Oh, but she was a Pole, too. She was on Polish papers. Oh, so it was a Jewish girl as an Aryan. Yeah. I understand. There were a few. There were a few that I recognized them right away because I don't know, that got some. Did they suspect you the Jewish girls that you might be Jewish? Maybe I did, but I didn't say yeah. anything. The same thing like you said. Yeah, uh, I didn't say Schreiber. anything. So actually, how did you come? You were in Birkenau and then one day they were taking people for transport. Could you tell us how it happened? Yeah, they take people for transport, and we also went away with a, for a day or two days with a train until you come there. 
to Hirtenberg and there we stayed. Was it volunteering or they just took you? It was a bit more, it was like this, that I, we were all standing when we yeah. came home. So they took, let's say, a hundred, a hundred and fifty. From the front? From the front. A hundred and fifty, and I put them there, and they counted. You, 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 go and go away. So we went away. Did you realize that they always take the people from the front? They yes, you realized. To go to and when you didn't want to go, you, you went to last. The back. Yeah, so you did, did. Yeah. And if you were ready to go, to go, yeah. I what to make you front. suddenly go to the front? Uh, I went to the front because I saw the, the from uh, Lodge how they came, the Jews and all that. So I said I want to go away from Auschwitz. I, I don't so want to stay there. So we went. Depressing. Yeah. So we went to. In Austria. There was a munition factory and we worked there. Mm. Was, the food was good. Um, so I didn't kill people there, no. no. Only, yes, you wanted to know how they, uh, how do you say, how they um, punished somebody. Yes. Yeah. So when I was in the magazine, so that was behind the kitchen. Yes. I was responsible for the thing, the and the Oberschafira told me, if you will take out one piece of margarine, he showed yeah. me, then you will lie down here on the floor, you would kill me. If you eat it? If I ta take it, take eat, it. he doesn't see it, you can but take but out, not, yeah. he, I wasn't allowed to take anything. So I thought, look, there You mean mostly. take out, there was a star? Yeah. And you can type products, But you had to take it out to divide it in. Oh, no, I didn't divide it. Ah, somebody, somebody else, else was taking yeah. it out. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that was right. I don't know who. You were cutting up. Him. He was cutting I wasn't even cutting up. He took the things. Mm -hmm. And I only had to write it down. And once oh, a I month, see. a man came from Althausen and he checked me. Oh. And made a few mistakes, not many. Yeah. Not many, yeah. So. And I didn't have anybody who can better German than I. Right, <laughs> right. So I had to stay. And there was a girl, I was at the magazine, and there was a girl, mm -hmm. and she, she, she washed the floor. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they can she wash the floor, there or then, and in the kitchen, I don't know. It was a young Polish girl, she was about 18 or so. Mm -hmm. And she, she took some. She took, actually it was stealing. Stealing. And you know, she put it in her pants. Oh. <laughs> Auch noch. And when she took it, she gave it to the Lager Älteste. Block. And the Lager Älteste. Block Älteste. Block Älteste, yeah. yeah she, she was, she was not in Hirtenberg, the Lager Älteste auch, weil it, it was a not many line. people. It was a, a small and she gave it to her. Yes. It was a smoking. And she gave it to her and she had onions and everything she brought. And she might have a beautiful goulash or uh, mm -hmm. this meat. And uh, he, the uh, Oberschafira, came and said, What is smelling <laughs> so nicely? Mm -hmm. That is better food than we have. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he came in and she had to show him the Lager Älteste, because she was a Häftling too, and she showed him. And he looked and looked and said, where did, did this meat come? It came from the yeah. magazine, magazine, of course. Star. Yeah. So, oh, if I would have given it to her, he would have killed me. So she got so, so I went to the Lager and said, I th asked her. Mm -hmm. And he asked her very early, because she didn't want to, to tell on her. So she had to say, she cleaned there and she took that meat and she gave it to me. Mm -hmm. And we had it cooked. So then he kind of, he, because he, at first he thought I did it. Mm -hmm. So the, a piece of meat is missing and oh, it was. I said, I didn't take so, it. That's the only thing. What I happened could say. to her? She, so first of all, they smacked her. I don't know with what, with an eiserne Stang or something. Mm -hmm. Metal rod. Yeah, yeah ve very big hiding she got. And then he poured water over her and let her stand like that all night. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Can you imagine? And how do I know all this? It was the next day when I came, she took the dress and she pulled it up and she showed me her behind and her legs and everything. Oh, she was, uh, it was black. And was she removed from the job or she still stayed on the No, same? she stayed on the same job. She knew already she won't take anything. Right. Otherwise, I would have gone. Yeah, actually. But I didn't. I didn't take anything. I said, I won't steal anything. I don't want it. I don't want to. Only mine I gave away. What I had, I gave away. You got a number in Birkenau. Yes. That was an Auschwitz number. Yeah. When you came to the new camp in Hirtenberg, yeah. this was still belonging to Birkenau? Or oh no, here to it was belonging to Mathaus. Yeah. Yeah. Did they change your number or not? No, no. They still have the same number. The same number. That's all again the, very important. Yeah. yeah. We had all the time and we belonged to Mauthaus. And then it, they said that the uh, war will end. That, that was, must have been April, start of April when we went away to Mauthaus. Then they took us yeah. to Mauthaus. Before we go there, when you went to Hinterberg, Hinterberg, did they change your outfit? Did they... Oh, yes. Every time they changed your outfit, and I looked at the fingers whether you have a... You had to go through a ring. selection. Oh, all the time. Yeah. Did you have selections apart what from was it? such a selection? It was just you had to go to the sauna and give all your clothes away and take new clothes. In um, case you hide. What something. were you wearing? Tunic, the yeah, the, the striped yeah. uniform. The dress, yeah. Anything else? No. But you, yeah. underpants and uh, yeah, underpants singlet. and a singlet. That's all. And reasonable size, which will suit you. Yes. Yeah. And you had still clogs, or you already yeah. had shoes. No, I had shoes. You had, had shoes. shoes, right size. Yeah, sometimes I give you shoes. shoes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you had the. Uh, Reasonable conditions. Yeah, yeah, it was for the poets. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true. Then you were in this. What were the other prisoners doing in Hirtenberg? Oh, the others went to a mountain and there was an ammunition factory. Right. Yeah. It was hidden in the mountain against the planes or the protection, yeah? Yeah, that did. Uh, and that you, did you were outside? The yeah, I was outside. I stayed in the kitchen. In the kitchen. Magazine. The quarter of the SS were outside. It's yeah. only the factory were inside. Yeah. Oh, and you were living with all the other inmates. Yeah. How did you get such a good job in the kitchen? Excellent. I didn't get a job in the kitchen. I got in the magazine because the I store. spoke. Because I spoke That's German. I see. Yeah. I but could write You got German. extra food. Oh, yeah. I got in the kitchen extra right. food. Good. Anything else you want to tell us about the Hirtenberg, what happened then? What do you remember? Do you remember something? I told you everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, you so that was it. And I didn't make Did any, you have any near contact friends with, uh, there yeah. in Hirtenberg. I didn't make any friends. And ah, yes, yes. No, Good. When we, when we went, as we, yeah, it came you know, April, and I said that the war will finish. So we went to Bauthaus, and I knew that we don't have much food to take with us, and all that, and we will what? probably starve there. Because all the others from Austria came to Mauthaus, and they belonged to Mauthaus. What was type, it, type time of the year was it? Uh, it must have been April. April. So my, the war finished, yeah. April 45. Yes. And you were marching, or? We were marching, yes. All day we were marching, and in the evening we went to sleep in a bar. Yes. Yeah. How many people? Oh, we were about all 400. Oh, maybe so it was a death rate was sick, very so small, practically. Yeah, that was small, yes, yeah, small large. Like yeah, large. and not many people died. No, not many people died. Okay. Then, no. mm -hmm. 
Right. If they were very sick, they sent them to Auschwitz. Right? And again, you never heard them talking about political situation, no. about the war. No, not much. Did no. They didn't come in contact with German population. Maybe they did. It they didn't never, work. Yeah, it they, worked. Yeah. You didn't have any... The Germans were not allowed to talk to us. I know. Yeah, but, I know. Yeah, but there are exceptions. Yeah, I got in touch with... Was it there? Yeah, it was there. Oh, I don't know. I got in touch with a German and he... Ah, don't that. <laughs> with a German? With a German, yeah. From SS because or...? Uh, no, a private German. He was watching the other, look, we were in Hilterberg, we were here, and we had electrical wires around. around yeah, and here, power. next to us, were also uh, camps, but that was free, that was open. That was for Italians and French. I see. They worked there, too. Deported also. workers or prisoners yeah, of war? Or? Yeah, they probably worked also in the factory. Probably. I see. And yeah. the People who went to work possibly came in touch, but oh, you yeah, were seldom. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course. I got in touch with them. Yeah. And then, yes, yeah, yeah, what a day. Then we went every day when we walked, we walked, let's say, 20 kilometers or 15 kilometers. Yes. That was the, the, what the we norm. walked, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we cut. I don't know whether we got a soup in the middle, or maybe nothing. And then when we came in the evening, we got food, and we stayed in a bar. Right. And so I thought, I thought now I got time to run away. Right. Because it was you were all day, and you were sort of in the Freiheit, not all the time in the, like in Auschwitz, you know. Yeah. And we walked and walked and walked, and there was a girl. And she she probably wanted to take my job, you know. So she helped me. But you haven't got a job anymore. No, I didn't have much of a job anymore. No, because yeah. we were out, and yeah. but I don't the know. Star she, was just, that she just wanted. Maybe yeah. she thought it will go into. Mauthausen, and there she will have the, mm -hmm. I don't know. So she wanted to help you. She helped me. She said, before, I'll help you. Mm -hmm. So she took a half a break, mm -hmm. and we went, you know, when you are on the way, so the people still sleep, you wake them six o'clock for the appeal or so, wake them six o'clock, and we got up four o'clock to make a fire and to cook a coffee. Mm -hmm. Give the people. For the, for the, yeah. yeah, for the people. And probably the SS uh, drank too coffee. Yes. So we got up four o'clock and I talked with her the night before. And we went to the toilet and I went first and then she went. No, she, we, she went first. And on the other, yeah, you had to go out from the show in a pretty far. Mm -hmm. And there was a, outside was a toilet, mm -hmm. you know, like the peasants have. And after, you go down a, a little hill, mm -hmm. and then you have to go around uh, maybe two, three hundred meters, and you are in the woods. In the woods, you are right. So right. you could leave, there was a guide? What was it? No, the guide came with us and he waited outside. On oh, the guard, yeah. Yeah, on the guard. And we went both into the toilet, so she gave me the parcel, mm -hmm. and I didn't go even on the toilet, I just ran down mm -hmm. and I done a quick, running quick, quick, the quick running was to the Was it dark woods. still? It was still dark a bit, yeah, yeah it was four o'clock, five o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. And it's not only that, but once you are in the wood, I won't shoot you. Because I can't run away all and leave the yeah, heft yeah. camp like that without yeah. any car. So once you were uh, there, you were right. So I ran away, and I was in the woods, and I ran away. And I ran all the time I ran, I was young. Mm -hmm. And 
nine o'clock I was at the same place where we were yesterday because oh, I recognized I the, see. Backwards, the so. place. Yeah. yeah, right. That was all. And there were Germans living in this place or whom did you approach when you ran away? Uh, ran away you can approach anybody that gave you a bit but of water. You were still in the <laughs> yeah, uniform? I was, yes, I was still in that. But you know what? I had a, the singlet underneath, so I threw away the dress that I went in the singlet. The singlet was without sleeves, but so you don't look tell. at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, but I was in the singlet. The singlet was such a hard the skirt. material. No, the skirt is away. With the, the, uh, and I took a blanket, and from this blanket, yeah, I came to a, a house, to a, but there was no husband, only the wives, because all the husbands were in the war. Yeah. And I told her, I'm sick, I don't feel well, whether I can stay here a day. So she said, yes. And I stayed there a day, and she gave me a needle and so, and I sold myself a suit. And I went in this suit. Did this can woman you suspect you being a heftling, or? No, nobody suspected, no. no. That was at the time when a lot of refugees, a German lot of refugees, refugees so that you are the Germans ran away from Vienna, from every, I had one say she's from Vienna, I said I'm from Vienna too. That's and your German was excellent? Oh, my German was excellent, yeah, I know. And you were free? Yeah, I was free. So that was in April 45? Yes. Yeah. Do you remember the date? Or? No, not no. really. And I came then to my girl, my girlfriend was working there in Lienz in Where? Osttirol. Ah, so you went to Lienz? And I came to her. Yeah. Right. She's in Israel now. A Jewish girlfriend? Yeah, of course. And how did you know where she is? I knew where she is because I knew her dress. Sent you bread in. Yeah, she sent me bread. Oh, you were corresponding. We were corresponding. She was an Aryan Piper. She uh, she was an Aryan Piper. Oh yeah, she was a Volksdeutsche. She, she worked there. Because Theoretically, she was a Volksdeutsche. Yeah. And she was where in Osttirol. In Osttirol, Lienz, Osttirol. Lienz. Yeah. She and she survived the war there. She survived. Do you oh, remember her name? Yeah, Mina Sharp. Mina Sharp. Sharp. And under what name was she there? She, she was there also. Uh, As Mina Sharp. Sharp. Mm -hmm. yeah. What kind of work was she doing? Oh, she was one time, she was in, a, uh, uh, in Munich. She was in a factory where she, she cleaned houses for Germans. And the uh, work that I sent her. Two, three, four. Okay. So um, you went to your friend to Osttirol. Yeah. Right? And could you tell us more about it? What happened then? You had a friend there yes. who was an Aryan Piper. Yeah, then I came to her. So at first she didn't recognize me because I come from the other world. Kind of right. <laughs> then she recognized me. And she had a mother working there too as a, a German woman. And she took me to her mother. And uh, that. Yeah, that was all. And then we went. There was still the war was on, mm -hmm. but she had a friend. And he was a Czech, and so he wanted. He talked with a, a peasant up in the mountains, and he wanted to take me there mm -hmm. to stay there for another month, for two months. We didn't know when the war finishes, because when mm -hmm. I came to her, the war wasn't finished. So. I didn't go because in two weeks the war was finished. Right. Yeah. And when the war was finished, we, she was in Austria and she wanted to go away with her mother. Yeah. And she had a sister too there. So, so we went to the... Um, oh, did you? You said in Polish? No. Yeah, something not, like that. Right, something. the representatives yeah, of the Jewish yeah, community the, from Israel? Yeah, not only Jewish, but it was the German, oh, German. people. We went oh. there to the uh, Rathaus. No. Oh, I see, city council. City yeah, council, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Town hall or whatever. So we went, yes, to town hall. So we went there to the town hall, and she was very frightened because she lived among the Germans 
she was Jewish and she lived as a German there, right. so a Volksdeutsche. So right. she was there. Well, so we asked, she asked him. There was a man sitting there and he was asking us what we want and what we came for and all that. So she said, I came, I'm a Polish girl and I came to, to, I want to go out of here, I want to go away from here. And uh, he said, where do you want to go? So she said, first to England. And he said, uh, he thought, was probably Polish people in England, we don't need. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, it is impossible, not now. Yes. So and then, then she said, and to Israel? So he said, for you want to go to Israel? Are you Jewish? She said, yes. Yeah. So he turned around and he said back, he said, I'm too. I'm oh. Jewish too. So he was a Jew, uh, two Jews. There was a Scottish army. And we found one, yeah, because he could speak with the Russians. Mm -hmm. He was from Russia and he could speak German and Russian mm -hmm. and everything. So he and what was his that. position? Oh, he was, I don't know, officer or something. No, I mean, um, the position in this town hall, was he? He, he was an interpreter. When in the, the army, army, when the army yeah. arrived, he arrived in yeah. Tom, after yes. the yeah. war. He was the uh, interviewer. Occupation yeah. of, so he was the representative. Yeah. The, uh, the, so he asked. Uh, the English so army. The, yes, so army she said, saw. I see. Yeah. So he had the quite army. A lot of power. Oh, yes, he had a lot of power. So he said, and you too? I asked me. I said, yes. So he, he said, give me your address and I'll come to you in the afternoon. And this afternoon he couldn't come because he was very busy with the Russians. So next day we came again. <laughs> so we came there and he said, look, I couldn't come. I worked very late till about two o'clock or so then I, I'm coming tonight. So he came tonight, he brought us a bit of coffee, a bit of that, and he came and we told him all the stories. Right. So he heard the first time the story about the concentration camp and everything. And he helped her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Then in Israel he was shot by the English. Like, uh, by so the what happened then? You got the papers? Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't. I, oh, yeah, he gave us maybe a pipe or something. But now other, then I stayed with my girlfriend for another two weeks and he, he came. He told the Jewish brigade yes. that they came and they picked us up and they took us to Rome. I to see. Italian. Yes. And did you continue to Israel or? Yeah, I wanted to go to Israel, Israel. But, that, that, but then they went to, uh, to uh, you know, in a camp there. In, oh, this this person. person, they went there to Italy. Camp, to Italy, yes. yes. And right. This, they, but this displaced person was under And my husband came and then we got married. Oh, I see. Right. And from and there she together, went, you went to Israel. And she went to Israel. No, no. No, we came here. here. We no. came here. You came here? We landed. We stayed here over 30 years, 34 years, then we right. went to Israel. So you to can tell daughter. us again what was daughter. the reason that you didn't go to Israel, that you didn't continue? Uh, because uh, of Tzipan, the Jews. They were sending again, the party people to yeah, Cyprus. to Cyprus, and I said again in a camp to Cyprus, I didn't want to go, and he found an uncle here. He sent us the papers, and we went to Australia. But your girlfriend, she went to Israel. Oh, she went straight to Israel. To Israel. Say why oh, not? yeah, I went with her up on the ship, and I wanted to go too. So at first they asked me, how are we? I say, I've been 12 years in Beta. So that was the finish. They never sent me to Israel. Because you were Beta and they belonged to the opposite uh, yeah, party, oh, oh, most yeah, likely. Yeah. Ashamar or something. <laughs> the girlfriend had no background. And she and she had no background. She was very rich and, and she didn't go. What would have well. happened if you would have said, uh, we feel you would yeah, have married? I would have gone to Israel. Yeah. With your husband? No, no. I didn't we know didn't him. We didn't know each other. Then. I see. I didn't know so him. You then. see, sometimes it passed. When she went, she I didn't know. That was my luck. Is this right? Yeah. No. Um, the questions which I want to ask again, pertaining to your past which we discussed, like for instance, when you were sick in uh, Birkenau, yeah. you were in hospital, yeah. there were any incidents which you want to report, like uh, 
were the people taken away to crematorium from there? Oh yeah, they were taken so away. Could you tell us how did it, how, what, what was the procedure? Yeah, Oberst Schaffira came yes. and he, everybody had to put out the heads to the, you know, there's the bed. And, they, and he, would he come in into the barrack? Yes, he came into the, the barrack and he said, this one, so she wrote down the number, that one, that one, that one. Oh, he found quite a lot, about and he, was 40 he or 50, and I had to go in the afternoon, I came to pick them up and took them and, uh, for guessing. He just had a look at the head, at yeah. the face, yeah. but he, did, he wasn't a doctor. He no, didn't he didn't look at the body at all, no, only at the face. If you looked right. green and gay, that I took um, People have different diseases there. Did they know that there is a typhoid? Yeah, I, they knew about I the knew, typhoid. They knew, they knew. They cried. One Polish girl, she cried so much. And the I Germans, did go. the Germans know that there's an epidemic of typhoid? Did oh, yes, yeah, they knew yeah. probably. Yeah. Could I ask an embarrassing question? Yeah. Lice. Oh, yeah, the lice brought you the typhus. So you had a lot of lots of despite life. the fact that you had better food. Oh, what yeah. were the hygienic conditions? Did you wash? Yeah, we did wash. When we were in Barbies, we had to wash Once every a week, day. Every day? Yeah. So you had the... That was did, all right. That was clean. Did you get soap to wash? Yeah, we got soap, yeah. It was a tap. Yeah, the tap, and water. you had to wash there. It was good. Good. And yeah, we liked it. your uniforms or your clothing? Was it changed frequently? Not so often, no, no, not yeah. often. No, no, just the last one once in two, three, two, three months, that's right. I see. Yeah. I see. Right. Do you remember what percentage of the people were dying off? Like if you were in a barrack, possibly there were tough. I don't know how many people were in one barrack, approximately. Could be oh, a, well, a few hundred. A few hundred Oh, people. yes. Right. Do you remember many of those people died or? Yeah, many died. Could you remember the percentage? No. No. So, a lot of people died. Yeah. Um, when there was an appeal? They got sick and they got, the, how do you say that? They just, just couldn't take it. Some, some. Because I came to the appeal and I saw, and there was one girl, you know, when I got friendly in the, uh, in the prison with her for one week. And oh, you were arrested? Said, for, you know, yes, the train. she was an arrest, arrested and I was arrested. So she said, her parents are also from Piotrkov. If you are alive, go to my mother. She will take you. I can't. So she just went. Mm -hmm. Do you think the psychological attitude, this will to leave yeah, or other... That what, helped you a lot. Yet, can yeah. you tell us in what why or specifically what sort of... Yeah, look, a lot of people went to the uh, uh -huh. gates, to the electric Fence, gates, fences. the fences, and they just electrocuted and finished. But I said, no, why should I go to electric? Not Hitler gave to the electric fence. So the air van. That I burned him. Did you have I, any I particular hate. thoughts which kept you alive? Ah, yes. Uh, what the, was it? Uh, I had, I had thought that I want to live through it and I want to see. To meet your family? Or? Yeah, to meet my family, if there is somebody left, but I knew. Because we saw everything. You yourself came from a religious family, but you were not religious. No, I wasn't. What did you think about God? I thought Embarrassing question. At first, at first I believed in God, but later on when I saw all this, I didn't. Did you pray? Did you ask God? No. 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 You stopped believing because how? You asked the question, how could God do that? Let it Especially to children. Let do that. Yeah, that. Right. Yeah. Especially for children. children. That was in... When did you stop believing? believing? Maybe in a half time when I was ten, I saw and I thought it would be the finish, but it never was. You know, you thought after a year, after two years. But it never was, so I just stopped. Did you think that the war will last such a long time? No, no. You thought that the war will last a year mostly to be the finish. Right. Um, again, the war is finished, you are free. Yeah. What were your feelings on this? Oh, I'm quite happy once. Yeah. 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 Right. And what else? 
you thought about the ones who perish. Yeah. What else? Do you want to go back home to... No. Because you knew that... I never went home. Because you didn't expect to find... No. Any alive. I may ask you a difficult question. Who from your family survived? My sister. Your sister? And brother, father, mother? No. Do you know in what circumstances they died? No. You don't. How did you get the news from your sister? Oh. We met after the war. And How did you meet? Yeah. Do you remember how I got somebody? Look, I met people. I met people from from Krakow, and one said that. Yeah, you remember? Yeah, he remembered. One said that. That one woman from the Obstfelds mm. is alive, but there was another one. She went to America. She was also. She was her, her sister-in-law. She also lived through, and she went to America, and we. So I asked somebody, and I wrote a letter. I think I wrote a letter to Teddy, and he found her. They found her. They found her in America. Did no, no, not in America. She was still there in, okay. in the in displaced person. But you said to that woman that you go on a transport, and the next day she met Saba. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. That's also interesting thing. So please tell I us about met a, a woman from Bilitz. Yes. And we went, we were very religious, and we went to the Basyankev, mm -hmm. my sister and I. So she went with my, because we were in Biala, and there was Bilit. So she went with my sister to the, to the Basyankev. Mm -hmm. And then, when I was sick and I was at the Revere, I looked out every day, mm -hmm. because you want to see things. Yes. So I looked out every day, saw her coming in. And she was holding the dead people by the feet or by the hand of the schlepping. And I put her on the... Then I carried her out. Yes, yes. Yeah. And when I was better, I was out. And when she t left this job yes. with carrying out the dead people, and she was a, a, a Torwache in the night, she was at the door. She was watching that nobody should come in, nobody should go out, something like that. So she was at the door. So once I went to her and I asked her, hello, do you recognize me? She said, no. So I told her who I am. Mm -hmm. So she knew, and she knew my sister. Mm -hmm. And we talked from time to time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I saw her, so I went to her and we talked, and she recognized me. And then, Yeah, then before I went away to Austria, mm -hmm. I met her the night before. Mm -hmm. And I went to her and I told mm -hmm. her, look, I've got already on the new clothes. Tomorrow morning I'm going away, probably to Austria, Germany or something mm -hmm. for work. And I went away. Mm -hmm. And the next day my sister came to Auschwitz. Oh. And she met her. <laughs> that your sister got regards from you. And she said, but you said you're going to go away. Why are you here? Oh, she said, that was my sister. She knew right away. I see. And then I met her. And then you got separated again because you... Oh, yeah, we got separated because I went away. And I was in Austria and she was in Auschwitz. Yeah, right. And when did you meet again? After the war. Where? Oh, well, she came to Rome. She came to Rome while you were already... Yeah, there. We were writing to each other. I see. Right. And so you discovered somehow her address and we have yeah. been in mm -hmm. correspondence. Yeah. Finally, she came here to Australia? Yeah, or? she came. Yes. A year later, she came to Australia. Australia. That's nice. Now, <coughs> have you discussed these experiences with some friends or your family? Oh, yeah, with my husband. Mm -hmm. And the children? A bit. A bit. How did the children okay. respond to it? But I want to know everything. There are read books about it and everything. I want to know. Yeah. 
Not when they were very young, they didn't. And when did it start? It started when they were uh, 30 and 25. Yes, yeah. 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 That, did these experiences affect their life in any way? Did it leave mm -hmm. any mark on them? Maybe it did, but they are, very are they involved in any very activities? She's a social worker in Israel. She works very hard, yes. but she loves it. Like my husband, my husband worked very hard and he loved it. So what I mean, um, like they she's got a social worker. She worker. Works with, uh, yeah, with mentally retarded mentally, people. Mentally, uh, go oh, out see. from the hospital and then uh, she. Had. And you yourself, as a person, did you change due to the what you had to go through during the war? Maybe at first I did. Maybe at first I did. I can see that there was a change that suddenly yeah. you stopped yeah. believing in God. Um, yeah. And there was other change. changes. Yeah, there was a change. What? The attitude is take it easy. Yeah, yeah. Now, after my sickness, I changed no, no. again. No, no, no. <laughs> sickness is a different thing. Yeah. But I mean, you were a person who had certain characteristics you already, you know. More than teenager, you were a mature yeah, woman. Yeah, I was always happy. Yeah, I was always a happy girl. A happy girl. Yeah. And then you went through all this. Suddenly, you found yourself free, free, yeah. but lonely. The yeah, very lonely. Very lonely. Yeah. And you, you know, I know what it is. The yeah. first thing is elation, and then you ask yourself, yeah, what to do? Where is my yeah. family? Where are my roots? Yeah. The other question is, what? You are a much more mature person. Yeah. Did your attitude to life, to the society, changed? Not that much. Not that much. No, not I that much. Um, if I would ask you, to what do you attribute your survival? What would you answer to it? As a whole. She was easy circumstances. Was it luck? Yeah, or a lot of luck. Of luck. Yeah, a lot of luck. Yeah. Nearly every day you have to have luck. Yeah. yeah. Um, could I ask you, why did you decide to give your testimony? First of all, my children want to have one, and then I want to, to give my testimony. I always said that I would write it down, but I'm not such a good writer. Right. <laughs> um, did it worry you that some people, even in our times, claimed there was no Holocaust, there were no gas chambers, and so on? That's terrible. That's terrible, yeah. Do you think your type will help us to fight these wrong ideas? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Thanks very much for coming You're here welcome. and giving us this testimony. I know it required quite a bit of effort and sacrifice. Thanks, yeah. Yes, yeah, a bit. Thank you. Um, you have here some photos. Would you like to describe yes, in the see that? So this is soon after the war. And this is my husband. Yes. And who is the next lady in a white blouse? That's me. And who is of the gentleman? This gentleman is a Scots. And do you remember when it was taken that circumstances were in what country? How did you meet the Scots? Yeah, this is got taken I think in Austria. Right. Italy. Italy. In Italy. In Italy. Right, in Italy. And what else do you remember about it? This was the Scots soldier, the first soldier we met. Right. After the war. Good, thanks. Now, here's uh, my husband and me when we got married. married. Do you remember where and when? Yes, in Rome, in the, the sixth, in the the Rome. In the big synagogue in Rome. In the big synagogue, in, and we got married on the 6th of 10th of 46. That's lovely. And what was the result of your marriage? Two children. Two children? Yeah, this is my son, Bar Mitzvah. This is me. This is my husband. This is my daughter. That's a very good photo. Yeah. I will keep staying it a bit longer. Yeah. So that's you, and that's your son, yeah. Bar Mitzvah. And that's your husband. husband. And this is my daughter. And what was the name of your daughter? Linda. Linda. And your son's name? Philip. Philip. Oh, it's a very nice name. Right? And that? And that is 
my daughter and my son. So Linda and Philip. Philip. And Linda is getting married. Yeah, Linda got married. Got already. married. She got two children. <laughs> and got two children. In what year? 53. In what country? Uh, uh, in Israel. 53. My daughter 53 is she's born. Oh, oh she's I'm born sorry. in 53. And yes. Sorry. It well, it 12 years ago. Right. And um, what is she doing in Israel? She's a social worker. She works in the lot. In the lot? Yeah. With particular type of uh, people? With a... She, she made uh, sociology in Melbourne and she made in uh, Israel, she in, Israel in, Barilan, in Barilan and, and yeah. she as a social worker she opened up a day center uh, for the organization uh, Enosh, right. uh, a day center for disabled mentally retarded people. people. Right. So it means after, after the hospital when they go out uh, to fit them in into life. To come to her. Mm -hmm. And to be of assistance mm -hmm. to them. Are you proud of her? Yes. Very oh, proud of my both children. What is your son doing? The son is a lecturer in Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, head of the Department of Law. Thank you. In law and Economics and Diploma of Education. He's very... Mm -hmm. And uh, writing, writing books now, the fifth edition of a book of about 750 pages, and the best seller, the best seller in Australia in uh, company law, in law yeah. in Australia. Thanks. And then I suppose you have some grandchildren. Yes, my okay. son has got one daughter, and my uh, daughter got a son, and a boy and a girl. Do you, would you like to put a message to your grandchildren if they watch the type? <laughs> Who, to Linda? To all of them? Mm -hmm. We love them, all of them, we're very proud. We are very close family, we love them. Thanks very, very much.